Within hypothesis tests, there's various different types of hypothesis tests that we can perform. In this example, let's take a look at a hypothesis test for the mean when the variance is known and we're doing a right-tailed test. In this example, we have a sports manufacturing company and they're setting their retail cost of their new baseball glove based on the manufacturing cost, which is $118.94. However, the company thinks that there's hidden costs and that the average cost to manufacture the glove is actually much more. The company pulls data from all of its manufacturing facilities on the glove for a total of 2,648 gloves that they've produced to date. Using this information, they've determined that the, the mean or the average cost to produce a glove is $121.07. We're going to assume the standard deviation is 72.98. At the 1% level of significance, or an alpha of 0.01, we want to test whether the average manufacturing cost exceeds $118.94. We have our null hypothesis, which is H0, our alternative hypothesis, which is H1, sub alpha is our level of significance, mu0 is our hypothesized mean, x bar is our population mean, Sigma is our population standard deviation, and N is our sample size. Since we're doing a, a right-tailed hypothesis test, since we're testing to see if it exceeds a certain value, we're going to set our null hypothesis is that the mean is less than or equal to mu naught. And our alternative hypothesis then is that our mean is greater than mu naught. Given the information in the equation, we know mu naught is $118.94. And again, this is what we're testing. So this is why it's our mu naught. We're seeing if it exceeds $118.94. Our X bar is the average from our data, which was our standard deviation was given to us as 72.98. N is our sample size, which was 2,648 gloves. From our Z table, we know that we're looking at an alpha value for 0.01. So our Z table value is going to be positive 2.326. For our Z calculation, we're using the equation from our Z calculation of X bar minus mu naught divided by our standard deviation over the square root of N. So within our formula, that gives us a Z calc value of 1.502. I've set up the logic here that if our value from B23, which was our Z table, is greater than the value from B21, which is our Z table, then we're going to reject the null hypothesis. Otherwise, we'll fail to reject the null hypothesis. If we look at the distribution, our Z calculation will fall to the left of our Z value which is in the do not reject region, so we fail to reject our null hypothesis. Our p-value can also be calculated then using our norm.s.dist distribution based on our z calculation from cell B23, and then we're using a one since it's cumulative. So that gives us a p-value of 0 0.06, which tells us our level of confidence within our decision. So it's important to note that when we come up with our decision, we're failing to reject the null hypothesis in this instance. So we're saying that the mean of 1.21 is less than or equal to mu naught, which is $118.94. So while we can see that the value is actually less than, since there's 
enough standard deviation, we can't conclude with significance that it's significantly larger than that value.